planning phase, okay? And in order to properly prepare and make sure that you have everything in place in order to succeed on your final exams, you need to have the answers to these five questions, okay? Are you ready? So the first thing that you have to do in order to prepare to succeed on your final exam is you have to figure out what's gonna be on your final exam. Some of the things that you wanna find out is whether or not the exam is cumulative. Is it gonna be on everything you've covered during the semester or is it just on the last few topics that you covered in your class? It's important that you know what's going to be on the exam so that you know what it is that you have to learn. When it comes to exams that are cumulative, some of the times there are certain percentages that the professors will use for the final exam. So. For example, I was just working with the student one-on-one, -on -one, Brianna, and she asked her professor what percentage of her final exam was going to be on new information and what percentage is going to be on past information from the beginning of the semester. And here's what she found out. A majority of her final exam was going to be based off the content that was covered at the end of the semester. And I think it was like 60, 40 percentage. So 60% of the questions were gonna come from new information and 40% of the questions were gonna come from old information. So this allows her to strategize where she's gonna spend her time studying. So the majority of her time is gonna be spent on that new information because she's gonna see the most amount of questions on that. So it's important that you find out what's going to be on your final exam what chapters are going to be covered what topics within those chapters because sometimes professors skip over information in certain chapters find out what's going to be on your final exam and the percentage of each information that you're going to see okay so answer that the second th question that you have to answer is what is the format of the exam now when i say format what i mean is is your final exam a project the way you prepare for a project is completely different than the way you prepare for a multiple choice exam, right? Is your final exam oral? Are you going to be asked questions and then asked to give your information, give, give your response to it? If you're taking some sort of a law class, this might be the way that your final exam is constructed. Is your final exam multiple choice? Is it short answer? Is it apply questions? Is it select all that apply? Is it matching? Is it fill in the blank? What are the types of questions? What is the format that your exam is going to be given to you in? All of this is important because it guides the way that, question number three, how will you study? You should base your studying on how the questions and how you're going to be asked to apply the information that you're supposed to be learning. The stuff that you're reading, the stuff that you're taking notes on is going to be asked of you in a particular way, in multiple choice, in fill in the blank, in short answer, and you need to know how to properly prepare for that, okay? Now the fourth question you need to ask yourself is, what are your weak areas? Now, I have a particular way that I like to go about figuring out what your weak areas are. And for me, what I like to do is look back at all the grades that I got during this semester for that class. And I like to figure out what exams I got a really high grade on and what exams I got a so-so grade on, what exams I failed. And then I like to see what topics were being covered in that exam. Now, if you got a low grade on an exam, that tells me that you didn't know that information, that you hadn't understood it, that you hadn't mastered it. So most of your time should be spent on that information because the first time around, you didn't get it. And if your exam is cumulative, for sure, you're going to see that information again. So you need to make sure that this time around, you actually know it. Go back, look at all of your past grades and your exams and figure out which topics were being covered during each of those exams and figure out what your weak areas are.
This is important because it's gonna dictate when you when you study what. This is gonna dictate your exam plan. This is going to dictate how much time you spend on that topic and where in your week you should focus on studying that information. Okay. So that's important. Go back and figure out what your week areas were. If you don't know, go sit with your professor. There is enough time in the semester for you to go and schedule some office hours or send an email and get information on what your weakest exam was in the topics that were covered during that exam. And then when do you study? So this is actually the exam plan, when you start studying. And that's what I'm kind of, I'm gonna jump into next, okay? This is what I call an exam Plan. Let's pretend that it's May and on May 19th and 18th, I have some final exams. Okay. I have some final exams that I need to prepare for. Now the rule that I like to teach, okay, and this isn't a hard and fast rule. You can study for longer. You can study for shorter if you find that that works for you. But through my own application of the studying methods, I find that allowing yourself three to seven days prior to an exam to actually try to retrieve information, do quiz and recall, and not just reread your notes, okay? You're quizzing yourself, right, during this time. Now, my exam is on the 19th, so what I do is I count seven days backwards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So on May 12th, I need to start physically studying for my exam, not trying to catch up on my reading, not trying to write notes. I am trying to figure out what I have mastered and what I haven't, what I know and what I don't know. I am studying. I am quizzing myself. I'm trying to see how much of the information I've actually mastered. So what does that mean in terms of reading and in terms of notes? If you plan on studying on the 12th, that means that all of your notes, all of your study guides, all of your reading, all of your listening to audio should have be completed by the 11th. Everything should be done at this point. Again, final exams should be a review. It is not a time to learn information that you should have already learned with the exception of new information, okay? If you have new information to learn, it should have been read and it should have been condensed and it should have been written in your own words by the 11th so that on the 12th, the 13th, the 14th, the 15th, the 16th, the 17th, and the 18th, you can quiz yourself on that information, okay? So the rule for creating your exam plan is figure out when your exam date is. Then count three to seven days from that date, and that's the day that you should start studying. I hope you enjoyed the episode of Soulful Study Sunday you just watched. I have so many more study skills and practical college advice in the Rock at College system, a step-by-step -step blueprint for creating your own study system. Get better grades without the stress, overwhelm, and lack of social life over at rockatcollege.com.